right. Hello, everyone. It's four o'clock. So we're going to get started with our open house webinar for our future education model graduate program here at the University of New England. I want to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Dodge. I'm the director of the Applied Nutrition Program, Master of Science here. Um, for future reference, we'll be abbreviating, th abbreviating that as MSAN throughout the presentation. And I'm really excited to introduce my assistant director, Dr. Maya, who's also directing the RDN focus, the registered dietitian nutritionist focus, um, which she's going to be talking to you about today. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, this is being recorded and it will be available to you after um, the session has ended. So if you'd like to review any information that's being presented, you're able to do that. Um, if you have any questions at any point, please um, put, enter them into the question box and I'll be um, cataloging those to answer at the end of the presentation. Um, and if you find that you have any questions after the webinar, please feel Feel free to email to this email address. It is nutrition at une.edu. And with that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Maya. Thank you, Dr. Dodge. We are very excited to be offering this webinar today and talk to you and share with you about our new program uh, here at UNE. We're very excited about it. I've put together a brief outline for today and we'll start with covering some general points of interest. There's a lot of changing that's going on in our profession and the education process and becoming an RD. So we'll talk a little bit about those points of interest. Uh, we'll also talk about the future education model, uh, which is where our, our program falls under, and the new 2024 standards. We'll talk a little bit about competency-based education. We'll talk about supervised experiential learning versus the dietetic internship. This is one of the changes that's happening. And lastly, we'll end with some highlights of our program. Um, in case you're interested and decide this is a good fit for you, we'll be sharing, sharing about our program. So first of all, we'd like to thank you for coming today and attending today and thanking you for your interest in our program and coming to hear what we have to say. And we're very excited. I, I've been a dietitian now for almost 19 years. It's a wonderful profession and I love talking about it. So I'm working very hard to keep this to time. Um, so what are some general points of interest for both the future education model and our UNE program? First of all, I'll start with our accrediting body, which is ASCEND. It's the Accreditation Council for Education in Nutrition and Dietetics. And they've, they've started this new program for demonstration programs looking at this new model of education called the Future Education Model. Our program falls into the graduate program. And there are some differences with the current dietetic internship. One of the big differences that is focused on in the future education models is competency-based didactic coursework. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we move through the, for the presentation. Supervised experiential learning is also a new component. And what this is, is it's, it's ours formally known as the dietetic internship. And the supervised experiential learning is now intertwined with the graduate coursework. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. One of the nice things about these FEM programs is that there's no match through DICUS. Um, those that are in the past that have applied for dietetic internships go through a matching service called DICAS. Um, students just apply to the program and that's the, the process for these future education models. Another exciting part is that anyone with a bachelor's degree in any discipline can apply. Programs have arranged it in, in structured prerequisites to guide the students as they look at these programs and they have set certain prereqs uh, for students to come in. So we'll talk a little bit about what we have for our prereqs as well. So this new, this new education model, um, these are the new 2024 standards. And beginning in 2024, students will need a master's degree to sit for the registration exam. Um, they'll also need a verification statement from these new programs that are accredited through ASCEND um, in order to be able to sit for this exam, for the registration exam. Um, again, also shifted towards competency-based education and the supervised experiential learning. Now, ASCEND also accredits other programs. So um, the, the term dietetic internship might be familiar to you. 
uh, coordinated programs, um, DPD programs, which are the current undergraduate accredited programs. Um, those are all under the 2017 standards. But we are now moving into this new FEM, and so things have, have changed around a bit. So what is competency-based education? Um, I've learned a lot about it in the past year, and I'm very excited that we are applying this approach in the nutrition field. The nutrition profession is one of the last healthcare professions to move towards competency-based education. So one of the hopes out of these FEM programs is this competency-based education will really help to elevate our profession. So it's a very exciting time to be in nutrition education um, for students. And so what is competency-based education? It's really looking at how students are acquiring this knowledge. How are they learning? How are they applying that knowledge and developing skills? And ultimately looking at how they're developing their abilities in future practice. Um, competency-based education also combines as an intentional and transparent approach to curricular design. So it's very specific when we're looking at designing programs um, and, and really matching and mapping where competencies are met within the curriculum. And so that's a pretty exciting piece as well. We also are looking at this, that we are going to be working with adult learners and adult learners learn best when they're able to apply and have assignments that are really focused and they have the opportunity to be able to bring it to their real world experiences. And so our, our program is designed with this in mind. And so ultimately, we're looking at how do we help adult students? How do we educate them so that they're engaged, excited to learn the material that we're providing? So by, by organizing it this way, really the construction of knowledge is helping students to develop higher order or, or critical thinking. In the competencies that Ascend has developed, critical thinking is a, is a big competency that we are assessing across the curriculum. Um, and ultimately here, we're looking at designing courses that allow students to not do the current regurgitation, so test quiz, test quiz, that sort of thing, but rather providing them opportunities and assignments to put their best work product forward. It's, it's, uh, it, it'll be assignments that they're able to use in their job, um, apply if they're, you know, to their future job that they're looking at as, an, as a nutrition professional. But all of our courses are really designed to, to enhance that and encourage that for our adult learners. So one of the big questions that I have been getting frequently is, what is the difference between supervised experiential learning and the dietetic internship? And so what we've done is highlighted out what those differences are a little bit for you. So you can see here on this table, we're, we're looking at some criteria here. This is the future education graduate program here at UNE versus these other accredited programs through Ascend based on the 2017 standards. So as, as I mentioned before, this is competency-based didactic coursework. So we have worked on developing a program and we're able to map and demonstrate where students are hopefully going to be meeting these competencies as they move through the program. There's also the supervised experiential learning. And what this, has, what this includes is these hours, as I mentioned, formerly known as the dietetic internship. And with these new standards through the FEM, these hours, these supervised experiential learning hours are actually done concurrently with the graduate coursework. So all of the, the education, you're taking these graduate classes. And then in addition to that, you'll be experiencing you know, clinical settings, food service settings, community settings, but it's all done while you're taking these graduate classes. Um, and so again, as, as I said, it's, it's going to be spread out into three main types of education. 
uh, but the key is that it's done at the same time. It's not done prior, you know, you have your one degree and then you're applying this down the road, but integrated together. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, students don't need to match. They have to, they only have to apply. Um, so you can see over on this side here. So we talked about the internship. So before students would complete a four year undergraduate accredited program and they would be eligible to apply for the internship. But now we're intertwining it. Um, the admissions eligibility. So now accepting these, these are all uh, FEM programs. Students with a bachelor's degree in any discipline versus, as I mentioned before, a bachelor's degree from an ascend accredited program. For our program, we've designed it so that students are able to complete their SEL in the location of their choosing. Most students are looking to stay where they live um, and be able to start networking, building their professional network there, uh, and complete their hours, their SEL hours there, versus a lot of the current internships require relocation. There are some distance internships, um, but we've designed it so that students are able to complete this where they live. Um, again, this is, there's pros and cons to every program. And for this, where you're able to, to do this where you live, the most of the lift and the responsibility will be on the students to locate the sites and secure the sites. Uh, our role as a program is to support the students as best we can. I've had a lot of great conversations already with interested students to be, and I've been able to guide them and, and help them find these sites where, where they're living um, versus current internships and some FEMs. Um, the students are not, re not required to set their own sites. They've already been established for them. One of the exciting parts of our program is We've focused very hard on what do future dietitians need to have as prerequisite coursework? What are we looking at to help them have the greatest chance of success? And so we've developed three very applied prerequisites, very focused in nutrition as, as the requirements to, to come into the program. And I'll talk a little bit about those um, in a minute. A lot of other programs right now have anywhere from, from nine to 12 prerequisites. So we're just taking a creative approach to see what we can, what we can offer students. So I've talked a little bit about the supervised experiential learning. So it's their learning experience that are going to occur in clinical settings, community settings, and food service management settings. So clinical settings would include um, a hospital, maybe a nursing home. Community settings might include the WIC program, SNAP Ed, Cooperative Extension, maybe Meals on Wheels. And then we have food service management. And that could cover a, a, any number of different types of sites. You could maybe do it in a, in a hospital. You could do it in a large public school system or maybe a university system. Uh, but we, we want students to have these different experiences across the board so that they're meeting the competencies that have been set by ASCEND. And the other part of this, again, is students are going to be really active in a real world environment. So you will be learning um, as you are part of it. Um, you are going to be learning as soon as you get into these settings. One of the things that we have done with our program is for our first lab that houses the supervised experiential learning, we are focusing on observational hours. So once you start the program, we've developed a lab to guide you professionally to get ready to be practitioners. And this first lab includes observation hours in each of the three SEL sites. You'll also still have guidance from preceptors. Um, Preceptors are going to be helping you and supporting you from novice. So as you observe and as you start to learn all the way through to mastery, when you're able to be determined to be meeting the competencies. So you're mastering the competencies. 
Um, but we we felt that having observation hours would be very helpful and a really nice step into the program and into the profession. So the types of SEL sites, I've, I've covered this a little bit, but you can see here, so clinical would, might include medical centers, hospitals, uh, outpatient facilities, private clinical practices, um, and really zeroing in on medical nutrition therapy. The role of the program, and mine in particular, will be helping you find the sites that will support you and offer you the opportunities to be meeting these competencies. We've got food service management. So again, we, we talked about that. Um, any, any sort of, uh, any sort of uh, organization that offers you opportunities to be serving meals, preparing meals, and interacting with patients, students, or the public. We then have community rotations, and I, I mentioned that, but this is really looking at nutrition education. Um, this is where I've, I've found quite a few students are interested in working at the community level. They really want to be working with patients before they get sick, and so they're really enjoying that um, connecting and offering education and building relationships with students. One of the other components of our program will be searching for preceptors. And as I mentioned, so past dietetic students required a four year ascend accredited bachelor's degree in order to apply for a dietetic internship. Um, the students with regards to the FEM, so we're having graduate students and the standards are encouraging preceptors to work across the spectrum. So offering those observational hours, and when you first start getting into interacting with patients and the other medical professions. Because this is a new model, um, we are actively working to provide education to preceptors because the familiarity with SEL, it may take a little bit of time with this shift. And so there may be some challenges with it, but the expectation is that it's really going to help elevate the profession. The preceptors that we work with and they want to give back to the profession and to help students. And so we're excited, we're developing a preceptor orientation so that we can really offer guidance and an understanding and an explanation of what this new program, this new FEM looks like. Uh, as I mentioned before, our program will support the students. You'll work very closely with me as you're looking for sites, as you're reaching out to preceptors. Uh, but ultimately the responsibility for securing the sites lies with the students. Um, I, I always encourage my students, it, it comes down to hustle and it comes down to professionally doing your outreach and making these connections and building your network early. Um, so it really can be very fun and, and very fruitful for you, no pun intended. Um, as you get ready for your next step. So we've covered the nuts and bolts, the changes that are going on in the profession, some of the new terminology that might be out there. And so now we'd really like to talk to you about the specifics of our program. So we are, currently there are 25 future graduate FEM programs that are accredited the accredited by ASCEND. There's more that are being approved. Um, they have meetings monthly. Um, so, but right now there's currently 25. Our program is only one of two programs that is offering the students the option to set these SEL sites up in their local area. All of our didactic coursework is 100% online and we have wonderful faculty. Our faculty are practicing out in the field. So they are active practitioners working on the ground, working with patients, working in research. Um, so they really bring a lot to the table with regards to the courses that we offer. Um, the students, we've designed it and so it can be completed in two years. It is designed to be full time. We have received quite a bit of inquiry about a part time option, but our program is accredited for full time and we did talk with the accreditors about this. We'll reevaluate it down the road, but currently it will 
it is designed to be done on a full time basis. Upon successful completion of the graduate courses and your competencies, so making sure that you're meeting the competencies and you'll be evaluated over the course of the two years on your SEL by preceptors out in the field, you'll receive a verification statement which will allow you to be eligible to sit for the RD exam. So as I mentioned, we've, we have three very applied prerequisites. Um, I'll take a minute, I'll just talk a little bit about the applied anatomy and physiology. So we really looked at it, what, what would a dietetic student need to know when they are on the floor working in with the patients, working with the doctors and the other medical professionals. And so we've really looked at what, with regards to nutrition, what will be most helpful. Uh, so we've looked at with the integumentary system, which is the skin system. We've designed case studies that look at if you have a patient with a foot ulcer, they're di they have diabetes, they have a foot ulcer, how would you approach that from a nutrition standpoint to promote healing, but also from an anatomy and physiology standpoint? What are the considerations you need to look at to promote healing for this patient? So we have the applied anatomy and physiology, we have applied nutritional biochemistry, and we have applied food innovation. We also will uh, evaluate transfer credits. Uh, so you'll work with our enrollment counselor who I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so we will look at transfer credits. We will need syllabi for any courses you, you'd like us to evaluate that you feel meet these courses. We'll need your transcript. Uh, we'll also accept a verification statement from an Ascend accredited program. So I know there are students that have completed a four-year undergraduate degree from a DPD program. You have a verification statement. Um, so that would also um, be considered meeting the prerequisites for the program. So again, key points of our program. It des is designed to be done in two years, full time for a total of 48 credit hours. You will arrange your SEL in your local area, so no relocation is required. Um, we, I'm the, the director of the RDN Focus. I'm also the assistant MyCN director. You'll work very closely with me as you do the outreach, as you try to locate these sites. You're required in order to receive full admission into the program, you'll have to meet the prerequisites, but you'll also need to line up 400 hours of supervised experiential learning. And by lined up, I mean secure. You'll be completing these SEL hours once you start the program, but you'll need to arrange the hours, the type of SEL, establish sites, uh, clinical sites, community sites, food service sites, uh, establish affiliation agreements with these different sites, um, and also get these 400 hours lined up. So prior to matriculation into the program, you'll, you and I will be working together to, to help get those settled. The remaining hours will be done within the first year of your program. So we've worked in three different points within your first year where you'll be required to secure the remaining hours of SEL, which I believe are 540. Um, and again, looking at all of these different clinical sites. So, if this program feels like it might be the right fit for you and you're interested, we have, you'll wanna complete the application we have online. Um, but then once you do that, what you'll be doing is working with me. We have a sample email to guide you as you reach out to these potential preceptors. We also have a letter that we've drafted that you can attach to the email that explains not only our program, but about competency-based education and about the SEL and really what we're looking for out of a preceptor to be able to support you. So we have that information to offer the preceptors. You will work to secure the sites. Um, once you decide, you know, if you decide this is the right program for you, we have a plan of study that we will work on and you will know exactly 
the dates you will be taking each course over your two years in the program. We are hopeful that that will help you be able to communicate very clearly with the preceptor, the amount of hours that you're looking for, and the dates that you're looking for. You'll need to complete a facility information form, so that will help me be able to evaluate the site and make sure it will provide you with the appropriate opportunities to meet your competencies. We've created a, a, a link online for a preceptor information form. So once you find preceptors that are willing and able to offer you SEL, we have a link that you will email to them and they will complete so that we're able to um, keep them in our database and also we'll be able to track what they'll be able to offer you for SEL. We'll also need the site to complete an affiliation agreement. I will be working directly with the preceptor and the site in order to get this affiliation agreement taken care of. An affiliation agreement is, is the legal contract between the university and the site that you will be working at. Um, so I will help you with that. Um, ultimately, you'll get an approval form. So once you have your SEL, the type, the hours, um, the, the right preceptors, you will get a, a form that will be uploaded into our system and that will push you into official matriculation into the MySAN RDN focus. Um, and again, we're available if you have, have questions about this and I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, the support we have in place. So we have our website here online. Um, so I've, I've added it here. Online, you'll see that we have a couple of different resources that might be helpful for you as a follow-up to, to just learn more about the program. We have a toolkit that includes information about the application process, as well as uh, sample forms that you will need to not only guide you on the types of SEL and the, the sites that you'll need, um, but also to help the preceptor. So we have that available for you. We have developed a preceptor database. Our marketing department has been a wonderful resource for us and um, our person has put together a database. You'll be able to find that online. Those sites, part of them he has found and located them for you as a source of support. So you're able to look and see where you're at, um, what sorts of sites are in the area, um, so you'll still need affiliation agreements with those, with those sites, um, but it's hopefully a guide to give you some samples of what you'll want to be looking for. We also did an information session not too long ago. It's a little bit more abbreviated than this one, but it might be helpful for you to also watch that to give you some more information on our program. So how can we help you? This program is structured to give you support from the that moment you reach out to, to get information about this program to the moment that you graduate. And so we have an enrollment specialist and our current specialist is Allie. And Allie will work with you on your prerequisite approval, your registration, and she'll support you in your online application. Allie and I work very closely together um, to, to be making sure that we're keeping up to date with the interested students and, and keeping on track. So we're mindful of your time and application process. Um, you'll be working with me right now as the, the RDN Focus Director. And my primary role really is going to be working with you to help you secure these SEL sites and supporting you in this process. We also have student support, which is pretty unique compared to other programs. And our current student support specialist is Stacy. And what he will do is monitor your progress. He will uh, outreach to you um, throughout your coursework. He's very engaged at the beginning of the, the session throughout your coursework, um, really to make sure that you have the support you need to be successful. Um, he, you also, he will also help connect you to resources to help you with that success. Um, one example is, you know, we have a few very writing intensive courses and we've got a fantastic writing center to help support students. 
And so Stacy really helps to, to moderate that and, and help you get, get the help you need to be successful. Stacy, myself, Allie, and Dr. Dodge, the director, we meet weekly. And so we have a pulse on where everybody else is at, also marketing. Um, so we really have a very tight connection with each other to really make sure that you as our students are supported from the moment you have outreach to Ali to the moment you walk across that graduation stage. So if you are interested, your first point of contact is to reach out to Allie. So you can reach her at this email here. We have a phone number, so feel free to, to call her or shoot her an email. And finally, we really appreciate your attendance today. Um, we know it's, a, it's later in the afternoon, so we appreciate that you took time out of your day to listen to our program, a little bit about the changes going on in our profession, exciting changes. And we really do look forward to working with you. And at this point, I am going to stop my screen and turn it over to Dr. Dodge so we can cover any questions that might have come up. Thank you, Dr. Maya. So we do have some questions. Um, the first is, how many different preceptors are expected as students, are, are students expected to secure the 400 hours from, i.e., is there a minimum number of preceptors required for those hours or no, so long as the three different settings are accounted for? Really good question. We really would like you to have a variety. Do you need to have a preceptor for every single week of your SEL? No. Um, what li very likely will happen is you'll have a specific preceptor for maybe one of your SEL sections. If you are in a bigger hospital, most likely you will have different preceptors that will help you as you're meeting your different competencies. So you could have secure an affiliation agreement with one site but have multiple preceptors. Um, and so what, how I've been guiding the students is, it's always good to have a variety. I think for the clinical, you'll probably have a fair amount of different preceptors because there's different competency levels, even within the preceptors and what you're focusing on specifically for a course. Um, the community setting, you may have a smaller, a smaller sampling of preceptors, um, you know, maybe one or two at a couple of different sites. Um, food service, again, depending on where you get your hours in, if you're at different sites, you might have different preceptors. But um, from my experience with the food service, it most likely will be the food service director, um, maybe a supervisor. So it's really going to be individualized and I'll help you with that. But that should be a pretty good guideline as you're searching for them. Um, the next question is, should you apply after you complete the three prerequisites or during? Another really good question. I would encourage you to talk to Allie. Um, what we want to make sure is that you meet all of the other criteria for acceptance into the program, into the graduate portion of the program. So I encourage you to reach out to Allie, who will walk you very specifically through that step. Um, what you are able to do is search for your SEL while you're taking your prerequisites. Um, that absolutely can be worked in, but we want to make sure that you can be admitted into the program before you start doing outreach and before you, you sign up for these prereqs and start investing your time. So my, my direction would be to reach out to Ali directly so you can get a very clear picture of what the process would be for you. So does UNE only offer SEL or also a dietetic internship? Another great question. So we are only offering SEL. Um, the SEL is specifically for the future education model standards. The dietetic internship is part of the 2017 standards, which are still going on, but you would have other criteria to meet if you wanted to do a dietetic internship. So our program is at the graduate level and has that SEL incorporated into your graduate coursework. Um, how long does it take to find SEL hours? Wow, really good questions, people. Um, so 
we we are estimating it will take probably six to nine months to get your first year lined up. The current pandemic might complicate that a little bit. We do have guidance from Ascent for us to work with offering other hours to help meet the required hours for accreditation. So we, we are staying up to date, communication with Ascend, so we know where, where we stand with regards to the current pandemic. Um, but I, Ali, could you, sorry, could you just repeat the question? Yep, I, how long yeah. does it really take to find yes. the experts? Thank you. Uh, so we're estimating six to nine months. Um, I will tell you, I, at my previous job, I knew a dietitian that did a distance dietetic internship and it did take her 18 months. So I think a lot of it will come down to, and I don't mean that to be a de deference, but just kind of a big picture understanding. Um, it, a lot of it will come down to the area where you are, um, what sort of sites you have in your, in your geographical location. Um, a lot of it also comes down to if these sites have relationships with current standalone dietetic internships. Um, I know a lot of bigger hospitals will take distant students um, kind of in between the dietetic students that they have that relationship with. That being said, one of the ways that we've structured our program that we believe and are very hopeful will be helpful for preceptors is that is how we've structured the supervised experiential learning throughout the program. So our courses are eight weeks long. And we're estimating that between weeks two and seven, you'll need about 15 hours of SEL for those weeks. Our hope is that that's a much lighter lift for preceptors when preceptors are currently used to having interns 40 hours a week for anywhere from you know, six to seven months. So we're, we're hopeful that this will help you be able to secure sites better, but we also are hopeful that it will be beneficial for the preceptor um, and a more doable uh, lift for the preceptors as well. Um, and you spoke a little bit to this earlier, um, but what happens if a site falls through, like for instance, because of COVID? Very good question. So um, again, we will be supporting you and working with you and help you try to find another site, um, guide you for outreach. Um, again, we do have some leeway with Ascend right now, given the current uh, pandemic. And so I think the best I can say is we will work with you as best we can to make sure that you stay on track, that you're able to finish the program in time and graduate on time. So you will have our support. And I do feel that we have very good support from Ascend right now um, with regards to, to this current situation. So I, I feel very confident we will be able to work with you. Um, can I transfer credit in besides the prerequisite courses? Okay, uh, very good question. So we would need to, they would need to be at a graduate level. And so we would still need the syllabi for any courses that you'd like us to look at. And we would also need a transcript. Um, one piece of information I might have neglected to say is we do require a B minus or better um, in the prerequisites that are coming in, which is part of why we, we ask for the transcript so we're able to evaluate uh, that as well. Did I Excellent. capture that? <laughs> yes, you did. Um, how often are the prerequisites offered? That is a very good question. And I would like to bounce that back to Dr. Dodge as she has a very good pulse on the overall schedule of the program. Yep. And so we do, we run the prerequisites um, on a three term schedule. So our courses are eight weeks. There's two per semester. You take one at a time, full time. And so the prerequisites are offered on a rolling basis. And so they're offered um, in sequential order, APN 505, then 510, then 515, three times a year. So that's how often you can get into those. Um, 
and I, I have another one I'll address, which is how frequent is enrollment. And we have a rolling admissions basis. So once you talk to Ali and you apply for the program, you can immediately get started working on your SEL attainment and taking those prerequisites um, and then get into the program as soon as you achieve those hours. So those two are kind of related. Um, I have a, what is the tuition cost? Um, per credit hour, we're $730 an hour. There are additional fees. Um, this is a 48 credit program. So you can go to the financial aid section of our website to get the breakdown on those specific fees. Um, these ones I think are for you, Dr. Myers. So do the sites have to be in your geographical location? Uh, another great question. Um, they do not. This is your choice to as to where you would like to do these SEL. Um, I will speak um, again. I've had students in previous in the didactic, so the DPD program, the undergraduate four year degree. Uh, I was the director uh, of that program prior to coming to UNE. And students that I had that looked at um, that needed to secure sites for dietetic internships, um, some of them actually would go to other places where for part of them, part of their rotations that they had scheduled for the dietetic internship, um, where they had other family members. And so they kind of split their time where they did their, their experiences. So some of them might have been where their mom and dad lived and they stayed there. Um, and then they were able to, to secure sites and go stay with other family members as well. The one part I would ask you to keep in mind is you'll need to know these specific dates as you're securing the sites. So uh, it's not as if you would be able to, um, it would be very challenging for you to change midstream. Um, so keeping that in mind as you're doing this outreach and looking and kind of planning for the next couple of years. Uh, I know two years is a long way out, but it'll be really important for you to try to get this as structured as you can, not only for you and your success, but also to be able to, to keep those hours with a preceptor that you've secured and being mindful of their commitment to you as well. Um, I've got two that I'm going to kind of ask you to answer together. They're related, I think. Um, one you've sort of addressed already. How many hours roughly per week would a student be working at with a preceptor at their SEL site while working on coursework? And then the secondary one is, are people able to work during this program or is it not recommended? All right, um, wonderful questions. We, um, we are estimating that, um, again, for the SEL, for an eight week course, we've worked in 90 hours of SEL. And so we have structured it so that between weeks two and seven, you'll be getting, you'll be needing approximately 15 hours of SEL. Now, there is some room to flex in there. So if one site says, I can take you for 25 hours one week, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. What you would, I, I would offer you to keep in mind is you're also taking these graduate courses at the same time. This is a wonderful program, but it is intense and it is rigorous. And, and eight weeks is a, is a shorter kind of period of time for the graduate courses, completely doable. We also estimate at least 20 hours a week for the actual didactic graduate courses. Um, as I mentioned earlier, these courses are very, they're focused on assignments, on projects, um, really trying to enhance your creativity. We have discussion boards that you'll be actively participating in weekly. Um, the way that the graduate courses are structured is that they're open for a week at a time. So the, the week starts on a Wednesday and closes on a Tuesday night. So we hopefully are giving you, you know, part of one week, we've given you a weekend and part of the other week to be able to finish these courses. Um, so if you're looking at, and again, minimum of 20 hours, um, feedback that we've gotten from previous students actually has that a little bit higher. Um, so you're looking at it, a minimum of 35 hours a week, but you're probably looking closer to 40, 42, 43 hours a week to be able to complete the SEL, the reflections that go with the SEL, and then the graduate coursework. Because of that, we 
we would encourage you to look very hard at working while you're doing this program. Um, we do not have a stipulation that you cannot work. We recognize that you're all adults and have other responsibilities, but um, the program is designed to be completed on a full-time basis. And just, as I said, very briefly, you're, you're looking at probably close 35, 40 hours a week of coursework. Um, so that, that's my, that's my recommendation is to, to really be very thoughtful and mindful about the commitments that you make outside of the program because we want you successful and it just might make it a little hard um, if you're going in a lot of different directions. Um, can the SEL get you your license as an RDN? What it allows you to do is you, you receive a verification statement that allows you to sit for the registration exam. Licensure is state by state, um, but what this program allows you to do is complete the accredited program. You receive a verification statement that you successfully completed this program, and that makes you eligible to sit for the RD exam. Once you pass that RD exam, um, the license, licensure laws are different for each state, and so you would want to look at your individual state and see what the licensure requirements are. Is there a list of courses available as a general reference? Um, so we do have in our applicant packet, we have a list of the courses. Uh, I believe on our website, Dr. Dodge, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are course descriptions um, for them as well. So you can get a little taste of the, to the courses that we're offering for the program. Um, so they are available if you, if you look for them. Yes, and it's not as user friendly as our website or the toolkit, but you can also look on our registrar's website, which is updated by term to look for, to see when specific courses are available and the course description will also exist with those, but um, it is a little bit clunky that interface. So um, our website is probably the best spot to find those. Um, can the prerequisites be from an undergraduate level? Yes, but we would need to evaluate them. Um, because even at an undergraduate level, they're very different. Um, we, what, what, I've found, what I've found with the, the syllabi that are coming in that I've evaluated, anatomy and physiology tends to be um, pretty standard. So that one, that one seems to transfer in a lot easier than the other two. Is it a guarantee? No, uh, which is why I ask you to submit the syllabus for the course and the transcript. Um, but anatomy and physiology is pretty set. Um, the applied nutritional biochemistry, um, we're really looking specifically for the nutritional biochemistry class. Um, a general biochem likely won't cut it. Uh, we have seen a couple of syllabi that have come through and we feel that they would ad adequately um, be comparable to our course that we've designed. Um, the food, the applied food innovation, that one, is very unique. Uh, I have yet to see another course that meets the, the criteria um, or is comparable to that course as well. So send the syllabi into Ali. Ali will upload them and I will be reviewing them. Um, so th that's the best advice I can give you on those prereqs. Um, can I take all the classes and then do the SEL after I finish all or do I need to take the classes with the SEL simultaneously? So uh, also, good question. Um, and this is, this is part of the, the new FEM standards. And accreditation is requiring that the SEL be done concurrently with the graduate course. So taking a graduate course and then taking the lab course that houses the SEL is not acceptable for accreditation. So you will need to be completing those SEL within the eight weeks of that same graduate course that you're taking. So that, that is not an option for the FEM models. Um, and I think, oh, let's see, we've got two more questions. Um, I am considering relocating to the Portland, Maine area. Would there be extra support because of the location of the school staff separately from this program? I was thinking of moving there anyways. Um, it's a wonderful place to live. I'm gonna start with that. It's a beautiful area. Um, I, I think it's probably gonna be pretty standard no matter where you are. Uh, the process is the same, uh, the requirements are the same, 
Um, so I, I really feel that no matter where you are in the US, the process is going to be pretty consistent for any student, no matter where you are. Do I know more dietitians? Yes, but we still have to go through the exact same process of getting the sites. We still have the same uh, issue here with current internships. Um, the second, second, I think, or yeah, the second or third largest uh, hospital here in the state, I just learned has interns for nine months out of the year. So that's, I, I think it really is going to depend on where you are, what other internship, current internships are in the area. Um, but if you end up coming here, hopefully we would get to meet you at some point that's not on Zoom when COVID goes away. Wonderful area to be in. Okay, a couple more questions have come in. Um, do you accept international students with certificates from another country? Okay, uh, so I would again direct you to Ali. So we would need to go through a specific evaluation of the international education and Ali will be able to guide you with that. Um, so we would just need to evaluate to see if the, the education you received in your country would be able to transfer in here. So uh, my recommendation would be to reach out to Ali and we could start that process of evaluating it for you. Um, this is a similar follow up. I live in Nigeria. How feasible is this program for me? So we, we're hopeful that we will be able to work with students anywhere. Um, I, I, I anticipate a couple of challenges with that. Um, one, we still are going to need the affiliation agreements. Um, this is a new process for us and we, we would really have to see what that international process of establishing the affiliation agreements would be. Um, the other aspect is we would need to vet the preceptors and the sites the same way we would be vetting the preceptors and sites here. So we would need to have a very good understanding, clear understanding, be able to communicate with the preceptors and the sites um, and make sure that what you have there in Nigeria, was it? Was it Nigeria? Yes. Um, to make sure that the sites and the preceptors are able to offer you the same competencies and experiences as someone here. So we definitely can talk about it. We definitely can look at that. Um, I just anticipate those might be some challenges, um, but please reach out to Ali and, and we can talk more about it if you'd like. And I would like to add to that because we were getting um, international student questions. There are testing sites um, internationally for the RDN exam. So if you do complete your SEL, successfully complete the program, you won't need to leave your country to find a testing site to earn that credential. Um, Another question, and I just want to, um, it's, there is a bit of a misunderstanding in the beginning. So the question is for the SEL average of 15 hours per course, it's actually 15 hours per week of SEL that's required. Um, but I'll finish up with the rest of the question. Would we be lining up the experience with the course? For example, food service class plus food service preceptor site. Um, and then, and would we know what schedule to be setting up to align with course content? So, okay, um, so this is where the plan of study, thank you for correcting me, Dr. Dodge, on my, my slip. Um, so once we know when you would like to start the program, we have the plan of study. And that plan of study, as I mentioned before, you will know the dates that you will be completing all of the courses and attached labs that house the SEL for the two-year program. On that plan of study, it guides you as to the type of SEL and the hours that you will need. So I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. So for our life cycle nutrition class, we have 90 hours of SEL. And within those 90 hours, you'll need to have 30 hours of clinical SEL, 30 hours of community SEL, and 30 hours of food service SEL. Um, the graduate course I teach Actually, that's not the best example. Um, so our medical nutrition therapy class, um, that would be 90 hours of clinical. So you would need to find a site, um, probably a hospital site, um, to be able to support the competencies there. So we've really scattered the, um, tried to, to arrange the SEL hours 
to match up with the didactic coursework that you're going to be learning about. So, so we're best really enhancing the information you're getting in class and what you're learning during your SEL. Um, what do we need in order to apply online right now, other than our previous college transcript as far as requirements go? Do you need recommendation letters and from whom do you need? And is this a strict requirement for admission into this program? Uh, what was that last part, Dr. Dodge? Uh, do you need recommendation letters and from whom and is that a strict requirement? Okay, um, so I would again direct you to our website. It has all of that information. There are um, questions that you'll answer. Um, I, I'm not remembering, Dr. Dodge, about the letters of reference, um, the recommendation. Could you please speak to that? References that are at a supervisor, director, or prof uh, professorial level, um, but they're references, not letters of recommendations. Okay. And that's submitted right through the online portal with your application. Okay. Um, so, and again, I would, I would go to our website. Um, it's, it's spelled out very clearly. And if you have other questions, I would reach out to Allie on that. Um, just as a follow-up question, does it seem like a place like a hospital has limited intern opportunities and might be full or not accepting more? I think, again, it's really going to depend on, on your location. Um, I will tell you, I've been very pleasantly surprised at the, the positive reception that I've had from preceptors. Um, I have not had any preceptors tell me that they're not taking students right now. Uh, I have not experienced it. And granted, we're just getting started. It's not a large number to compare, but the, the preceptors have been very engaged and very positive with taking students. Um, I've heard from other students that have done outreach for this program. And as of right now, they have not been turned away yet. Um, so I, I think that it really will depend on the area. We're also, again, hoping that the way we have it structured and having a smaller hour requirement per week would also be more feasible for the preceptors and the sites. Um, and again, that plan of study will really help you nail down and be able to outreach to these preceptors and say, I'm looking for X number of SEL hours between this date and this date, looking for about 15 hours a week for, for weeks two to seven, do you have any opportunities available for me? Um, so that, that would be my, my recommendation for that. Um, how many SEL sites does someone typically have to secure for the first year? Again, very specific. So you'll, you'll need to have types for all three. So clinical, community, food service. My, my expectation is that you may be able to get into a smaller hospital for the first year and be able to meet your competencies or at least have opportunities to meet your competencies um, rather than that second year where you're probably gonna need a, a bigger hospital for those higher level, more advanced nutrition courses. Um, you're probably looking at minimum for the second year, 60 to 80 beds um, to, to really be able to give you that experience. Um, but you may be able to get smaller hospitals you know, 25 beds, 50 beds to help you provide opportunities for you to meet the competencies for that first year. Um, but it'll really, it'll really take legwork on your part to really see what you have in the area um, and what the availability is. Um, but again, hoping that with that smaller hour requirement per week and maybe for a shorter period of time, um, it'll be more, um, more beneficial and, and productive for you. Is this program run in a cohort model? For example, are students beginning in the same program at the same time, all taking the same online courses together? That's our hope, um, is that once you know your start date, that you will be working with that cohort throughout your two years. I still keep in touch with um, my roommate from my internship a number of years ago. Um, we still keep in touch. Um, actually quite a few of us still keep in touch. So we feel that that's a very important um, aspect of this program, especially being distant. So um, that's our hope is that you will establish relationships that will really last across the board. Um, the other thing that we're actively working on is creating uh, some sort of platform for uh, potential students as they're working 
uh, towards securing their SEL so that maybe you're able to share ideas with each other and bounce ideas off of each other about different sites and different luck on different sites. Um, so we're also actively working on that. So we really do want to create a community for you as you go through this program because we feel it's really important. Um, can a current student from the Applied Nutrition program at UNE switch to the RD Focus program without losing the classes already taken? Um, it will depend on when you took the classes and what classes you've already taken. Um, so we'll need to evaluate that really on a student by student basis. Um, so I would encourage you to reach out to Stacy, our student support specialist, or Allie. Um, so that we can get a pulse on where you are in the program and what it would look like for you to change over to that track, that focus. And let's see, um, I studied two careers in Mexico, but I live in the US. I have two certifications here, one from the Integrative Nutrition Health Coach and a Functional Medicine Practitioner from the SAFM. Will it be possible to use these credits for this certification? We would need to evaluate what courses you have, um, and they would need to be at a graduate level um, and an accredited program. So there would need to be academic credits associated with whatever courses we're going to be evaluating. So um, best bet would be to gather up your syllabi, um, take a look at the courses that we have and see if, if any of them match up that we could possibly look at. Um, submit them to Ali and I'll take a look. Uh, I, the way I'm, I'm approaching it is I, I want to really evaluate and see whether you can bring them in so that it will help you be successful in the program. Um, I also want to be very mindful that if you've taken these courses, I really want to look at them and be thorough and make sure I'm giving credit where credit is due. Um, so I, I really take this very seriously, <laughs> maybe too seriously, because I really do analyze them. So please feel free to upload them um, to Ali, but look at the course descriptions first. Um, please don't send all your syllabi in. Really look at the courses we offer, the descriptions, look at the courses you've taken, and, and see which ones would be most comparable, and, and I'll take a look at those. Um, how early should I take the three prerequisite courses you listed earlier before admission if each prereq class is offered on a rolling basis? I, if I were to apply for fall 2021, should I take the three prereq courses in spring or spring summer prior while trying to secure the SEL sites? I, I would encourage you to, to jump on it sooner rather than later. Um, one, it's really going to help give you a pulse on the program and the way that the program is structured. Um, if you don't have a science background, these courses, two of them are very heavy in science. And so it'll really give you a pulse on what to expect as you move into the graduate courses. Um, so I, I really, again, I encourage you to get that regular application going, talk to Allie, make sure that you meet that, that criteria. Um, but I do recommend getting a start on those prerequisites sooner rather than later so that you have a really good understanding of, of what's coming down the road with the program. Um, how long has this program been offered? Do you have data on where past graduates are employed now? So this particular focus, which is the RDN focus, we received accreditation in June. So we are taking in our very first group of students. Um, it's been very fun, it's been very exciting. Um, so we don't have any data to support with regards to this program. Um, we have had the Masters in Applied Nutrition, the standalone Masters, and we have data around that. Um, and that might be something that you could reach out to me or Dr. Dodge directly and we can talk to you a little bit more about that. And um, I I work in pediatric and endocrinology office. Can I do all SEL hours there or hours need to be done in the hospital as well? Um, again, where it really comes down to will be the competencies that you need to meet for the course that you're in at the time. Um, endocrinology, without a doubt, is going to give you some opportunities to meet some competencies, um, but probably not all of them. So I, I think it would be a, a wise idea to look at other sites. The other part that I'd like to toss out there, you will have to, if you're working at a clinical site or a community site and you already have a job there, 
based on our affiliation agreement, you cannot count any hours of your work hours towards your SEL. It needs to be separate time. Um, and that is spelled out in our affiliation agreement. So if you are working at a site, it will be important that you are distinguishing when you're doing these hours for your SEL and when you're on the clock. We will have a form that you will have to document um, the hours that you're putting in and the preceptor is going to have to sign off on those. Um, again, that's a legal that's a legal guideline that we have. Um, so being mindful of that. Um, if you've got connections and resources where you're working, that's fantastic. But you'll have to be very uh, careful on how you set your hours up for your work schedule and your SEL hours. Um, do I need to visit the sites physically during my SEL? Also, how long will the prerequisite courses last in total? Um, so yes, you will be on site for the SEL. There are some exceptions. Perhaps you land a site that offers telehealth or virtual visits that will allow you to be able to do these from home. Um, we're looking at a couple of options with uh, companies that offer telehealth as options for our students. So we're actively working on that, um, thinking that we'd be able to support um, some of those hours that way. So that's one project that we're working on. But yes, the SEL is actual hands-on application and practice in a professional setting. Um, there was another part to that question, Dr. Dodge. Um, right. um, how many prerequisite courses last in total? Um, I guess I'm not quite sure I understand that question. Um, do you but have thoughts on it? I can try and take a stab at that if you'd like okay. to clarify. Yes. We um, definitely do so. So the courses are each eight week courses. Um, so you would take three total eight week courses to complete those prerequisites. Um, and then the it looks like the final question right now, you'll appreciate this, Angelina. Um, I have a bachelor's in nutrition and dietetics from Brazil. Does taking this oh. master's allow me to take the RDN exam? <laughs> That's near and dear to my heart because my husband is from Brazil. Um, so again, we would just need to evaluate that. So I would contact Ali and we can evaluate your transcript, your courses, see what the credits look like, um, and see if there's any prereqs that might come in from that. Um, if it's not a graduate program, um, there may be another way that we can evaluate it through a send. Um, so I can also look at from that perspective as well um, to see what that could look like. But uh, I would encourage you to reach out to Ali and we can figure out the best way to, to evaluate that for you. Obrigada. Yeah. You got, you got a smiley face. Yeah, I noticed the last name. Oh. <laughs> uh, are there any prerequisites to the prerequisite courses? Um, Wow, that's a question. No, right? I, I don't believe there are, no. Because there are some prerequisites that I've, I've talked to other students and there are prerequisites for those prerequisites. And no, we do not have prerequisites for our prerequisites. Yeah. Um, and a lot of programs do. So it's, a, it's yes. an important question to think about. Yes. Um, is there a capstone project at the end of this program? There sure is. And yours, Dr. Dodge will be your, um, your person, your faculty member for that. Um, there, it's a non-thesis program, but if you are interested in doing a thesis, that is an option. We encourage you to talk to Dr. Dodge early on in the program so that we can really help you figure out what that looks like. Um, but yes, there is a research project at the end, a big capstone project. But throughout the program, there are other research-based pro projects to help get you ready for that. So you'll write a conference prospectus, you'll write an IRB proposal. Um, so there's interspersed in the, in the courses prior to that capstone, we also have a fairly solid research, um, research base throughout the program to, to get you ready for that capstone. Um, does a DPT verification statement bypass the prerequisite requirements? Yes, it does. Um, so get that, we'll just need a copy of that. Um, so get that to Allie and we can take a look at that and it should be fine. As long as the B minus or better it's, is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. And, um, 
someone is asking for the contact information. So um, could you put the slide back up that has perhaps our website? And that is the best way to find all of our contact information, whether you need to get in contact with myself, with Dr. Maya, with Ali, um, that's the best place to go to yeah. find our contact information. So, um, yep. So we've, here's the email, the phone number, and our website is here. We're also on the Ascend website, so if you Google Ascend FEM, um, it should bring you to uh, a link where you'll be able to see our program information as well um, and get you to us that way as well. Absolutely. And I think we're at time. I don't see any more questions coming through, but if you do have questions as a follow-up, for any of us, please send them along and we will do our best to answer those. Um, and um, we will look forward to talking with you after you all have talked with Allie. Um, I hope everyone has a great evening and thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you.